So today, it is with great pleasure that I introduce Halima Musa Abdul. She is a nurse midwife, a fellow of the West African College of Nursing, and a lecturer from the Department of Nursing Science at Armadou Bello University, Zaria, Kaduna State, Nigeria. She started her journey into nursing in 1996 in the School of Nursing Armadou Bello University Teaching Hospital, Zaria, Nigeria, where she qualified as a registered nurse in 2000 and proceeded to qualify as a registered midwife in 2005. In 2014, Halima gained a master's degree in maternal and child health nursing midwifery. And in 2012, Halima was registered as a public health nurse with the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria. Halima won an international student in 2016 to undertake a PhD study of the well-being of the Nigerian midwifery workforce based in Cardiff University in the UK. She has published articles in high impact factor journals and has also presented papers at both national and international conferences. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Halima to talk about her study on midwives experiences and prevention of workplace violence in tertiary hospitals in northern Nigeria. You're very welcome Halima. Are you able to unmute your mic, Halima? And then you have presenter role now. Are you there, yeah. Halima? Yeah, yeah go perfect. Go. Yeah, thank you very much, Ali, for having me. And thank you very much for that description of me. Yeah, my topic, what I'll be talking about today is a bit of finding out of my PhD journey. And it goes this way, even some of us were being slapped. And then what do you do? It's just at the expense of your job. This is a bit of a verbatim extract of the quote from participants describing or explaining some of their experience that depicts workplace violence. And then here we go. I'm going to be talking about the experiences and prevention of workplace violence among midwives in tertiary hospitals in northern Nigeria. And that's my name again. My supervisors, Professor Hunter, Hunter Billy, Warren Lucy, who are all midwives based in Cardiff University, United Kingdom. Now, midwife has been reported as experiencing higher level of stress compared to other healthcare professionals. This is not surprising due to the nature of our work that deals with us dealing with women with extremes of emotion, emotion of joy, sadness, and sometimes an experience of maternal death in some developing countries like our country, Nigeria. In Nigeria, the midwife stress is further increased because of palpable shortage of midwifery workforce and a high maternal and infant mortality rate, which, which I'll be talking about as we go through the slides. Still on the introduction, a shortage of midwifery workforce is a global phenomenon including Nigeria. Nigeria is ranked seven out of 57 countries in the World Health Organization region. And this World Health Organization region is a region of Africa, region of America, region of Southeast Asia, the, East, the region of Euro, the European region, the Eastern Mediterranean region, and the Western Pacific region. From the cycle there, Nigeria, for those of us that don't know where Nigeria is, Nigeria is situated in West Africa. We have a population of about 200, over 200 million, which is generally about the population of Eastern Europe. We have one of the highest maternal mortality in the world. 
the official figure from Nigeria says we have about 500, 512 maternal deaths by 100,000 live birth, but the UN United Nations Agency puts the figure of, of about 914 by 100,000 live birth. So whichever figure or statistic we are going to be using, these maternal deaths are highly phenomenal. And this puts midwives to more stress because they try to work so hard to make sure they save the life of mother and find a way of turning around the maternal mortality. Now, still on the stress issue or workplace adversity, many tertiary hospital is a busy unit in Nigeria. And I want to explain why we have that here in Nigeria. Tertiary institutions are facilities that are designed to accept referrals from primary healthcare settings, secondary healthcare settings, and sometimes the private settings. But due to the low functionality of primary healthcare settings, in theory, the primary healthcare facility are designed are supposed to be the entry points for the women into the community to seek for help. And then when there are complications or issues or issues arising, they're supposed to be referred back to tertiary hospital for further management. Now, because of this low functionality of these hospitals, 60 to 90 percent of mothers self-refer themselves to tertiary hospital increasing the number of women using these centers and placing a high burden of high pressure on the frontline midwives still on that these shortages of midwife with harsh work environment characterized by frequent stock out of basic commodities. What I mean by stock out of basic commodities is that you find out that in instances, some of the consumables that are supposed to use to support these women during childbirth are not available. This is a source of stress for the midwife because the midwife is ready to provide care, but the items you're supposed to use is not there, so it's a source of stress for the midwife. Together with poor supply of water and electricity and the increasing rate of facility-based delivery, notable in tertiary hospital, like I've said before, result in a perfect storm for the midwife. Now, all these issues, all these issues may result in moral distress, burnout, and the inability of the midwife to provide quality of care to the mothers because of all these issues. There is also a link between burnout and the mistreatment of women. And of course, this may contribute to a poor midwife relationship as reported by many studies. This is a part of the, this is a part of the midwife. Now studies have also, uh, also reported that in Nigeria, the out of pocket expenditure, which constitutes about 90%, nearly 90% of health expenditure in Nigeria, places a significant burden on majority of the household, most households. Out of pocket out of pocket system of healthcare finance has its own in inherent problems. Now, the effect of catastrophic health expenditure incurred, among other factors, literacy, ignorance, and many other factors may result in patient aggression as reported by other studies at the slightest provocation and they may transfer the aggression to the healthcare workers. Now, all these events collide in the labor room and may further result in the experience of workplace violence. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health defines workplace violence as the act or threat of violence ranging from verbal abuse or physical assault directed towards a person at their workplace or at duty. Understanding how midwives navigate through this phenomenon while providing quality care to this woman is very, very important. Originally, the study was carry out to ex explore to explore the characteristics and the phenomenon of workplace adversity, how it's experienced by a midwife. 
But this is an accidental finding that workplace adversity could be caused by workplace violence as experienced by the midwife. And that brings me to this, to, this, to, to share these studies with the participants, with the audience. Resilience has been reported as the key for coping with workplace adversity. Resilience is the ability to respond positively and consistently to adversity. Now, understanding how women navigate and survive and thrive in such environment is very, very important for Nigeria midwifery. Because study has documented that a well-motivated midwife is able to reduce four out of five maternal mortality, four, four out of five maternal death. And that is all that is what all we are all what we are all fighting for to achieve in order to achieve the universal to 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 achieve the sustainable goal number three still on the slide it's it's taking a little bit to come up the research objectives of the study originally was to explore, this is just a bit of the research objective, is to explore how the phenomenon and characteristics of workplace adversity are experienced by midwives and to develop a compelling grounded theory of midwife resilience, which can be transferable to other settings. Still on the slide, I'm sorry, the slides are taking a little bit slower to come up. Now the methodology and methods, the research design, of course, is a qualitative research design because we are looking at, we're trying to explore the experiences of midwives. The constructivist grounded theory methodology was adopted. There are five tradition of grounded, there, there are five tradition of the qualitative research. We have the phenomenological, we have the ethnography, we have the case study, we have the grounded theory, and we have the narrative research. The grounded theory methodology was adopted. Why? Because this is obviously the first study that is trying to explore the adversity of midwives, specifically to midwives alone, working in maternal health care centers and units in tertiary hospitals. And the concept of resilience has not been studied anywhere. The first concept, the, the, study, the first study of resilience was conducted in United Kingdom in 2014. But that study used, used a descriptive qualitative research to explore the meaning of resilience among the midwives there. But in developing country, considering the nature of our own adversity, it becomes very pertinent to explore how midwife working in such areas develop resilience to survive and thrive and give compassionate care to mother. And that brought us to the study. And because the concept of resilience has not been explored in our own region, grounded theory was the best method because nothing is known about the concept of resilience and there's no study has been developed develop using a grounded theory to develop a, a compelling theory explaining how midwives survive and thrive in the face of adversity. The area of study that I've mentioned before a tertiary hospital and I tried to provide the reason why tertiary hospital, the midwives working in tertiary hospitals were used for this study. The method of data, data collection or the methods we are using interviews feed notes, reflexive diaries, and reflexive journals were used. Initially, focus group discussion were supposed to be held among the midwives, but it was almost impossible for these women to, to, to be bring together to form a focus group because the nature of the work, their overwhelming workplace. Even at, even at a cursory glance, you could feel that these midwives are under siege. So focus group was not used. So interviews, feed notes, and reflexive diaries were used as a method of data collection. The population of study in the two tertiary hospitals were a total of 108 midwives working specifically in maternal, maternity health unit, that is the obstetric and gynecology. 
gynecological ward. The sampling technique was a purposive sampling, which is usually done in a grounded theory. In most grounded theory studies, two samples are used. The first sample is a purposive sample where participants who are believed to have an experience or understanding about, the, about the, the, the phenomenon on the study are being approached for data collection. After the data is collected, it is being analyzed all through using the grounded theory methodology process, which will be discussed in the subsequent slide. Now, to ensure good clinical practice in, in medical research, ethical appro approval was sought from, the three, from, the, from three sources, one from Cardiff University, two from the two tertiary hospitals where the studies were to be conducted. In vivo 11 was used for organizing the data and to ensure credibility of the results. Now the theoretical sample sampling. Theoretical samples is the method of sampling that is specific to grounded theory methodology. The theoretical samples are those participants that the researcher feel they have they, they have information, they have information rich, rich information that is necessary for theoretical generation. And so they are approached after due consideration for subsequent data collection. I want to let us know that the data collection of grounded this, uh, this study was in two phases, which lasted for the period of 12 months. The first phase lasted for four, five months. After about five months, the data, the, the data collected was analyzed. When the theoretical samples were identified, I went back to the field and did another data collection that lasted for about five months. And then the transcription and data analysis subsequently took to about 12 to 15 months entirely. Now to select the theoretical sampling, the snowballing method which is used and the long years of data, long years of experience was used as a yardstick to consider the midwives as those necessary to form the theoretical sample after due consideration and discussion with the participant. Sorry, the slide is taking some seconds to come up. In grounded theory methodology, the grounded theory methodology is both a method of data collection and analysis. It has about 12 steps which must be considered when collecting data and analyzing the data. For most grounded theory methodology, it is pertinent for the researcher to identify those that will form the purposive sample. And what I did here, identify the midwives. How were these midwives met? They were met, I, I met these midwives at the hospital. The two tertiary hospitals, they, have a, a, a dedicated day where the midwives come together with the, with the members of the the, the, the senior the, the senior members of the the midwives in the hospital they have a meeting every monday i presented the study just to stimulate them and let them know what the study is all about those that indicated interest were given a participant information sheet which explained why the study is needed what they need to know about the study and those persons that were interested to participate were asked to give a call or send a message for me to come back. And when I was contacted, I met each one of them with a consent form and everybody signed. All the participants, were, all, all, majority of the midwife were all willing and happy to participate in the study. Consent forms were all given to them. The consent form was filled and signed by the midwives and was returned before collection of data. Now the steps here for data collection and analysis, about nine to 10, that is what's run for the purposive samples and the theoretical sample. Now for each sample, an analysis is done for the purposive sample. After the analysis, 
you identify the participants who you feel they have rich information that is necessary for theory generation and they are met for the second phase of the data collection and those those participants will form the theoretical sample and then you collect the data from the, this participant and run the same method of data analysis until data theoretical saturation the theoretical saturation is when you feel the new data that is being collected from the participants sparks no theoretical insight then you could categorically say your epistemological hunger has been satisfied and then you can stop and begin the process of theoretical generation now and ensuring rigor in qualitative research rigor is thoroughness in qualitative research the four process identified by lincoln and guba is the credibility dependability and confirmability and transferability for credibility concurrent data analysis was embarked and this was done by collection of data and immediate analysis of the data so that it will inform the subsequent interview guide for new information of course triangulation of method was used the feed notes the the, the the feed note, the reflexive journal, and the interviews were used. The interviews lasted, I forgot to say that before now, the interview lasted between 45 to one hour, 30 minutes, 45 to 90 minutes. It was a long interview and the midwife were ready to talk about all their experience. The data was transcribed by me, the researcher, and then it was analyzed subsequently. And then to, to also ensure credibility, theoretical saturation was achieved when new data generation does not spark theoretical insights. Therefore, dependability and confirmability, peer debriefing by the supervisor, part of the interviews that were transcribed were sent to the supervisors who double check across the audio to be sure no data was missed and they also analyze some some of the data some of the transcript to check for consistency of the codes and then to also ensure dependability and confirmability I, will, I remain reflexive all information collected during the data collection all ideas talked about by the participant were noted on my reflexive journal which i use extensively while doing the analysis and that supports the reasons for many actions at the period of data collection and data analysis then for transferability of course for qualitative research we have usually very small sample compared to quantitative studies but because of its grounded theory methodology two tertiary hospital was utilized to ensure rich data necessary for theory generation now the tentative results and analysis i call them tentative results but because for grounded theory you are not done until you've submitted your thesis you've generated your theory and then you can say fine and that's all the first category we have here is experiencing workplace adversity and perceived effects and then we have this half subcategory, which I'll talk about in the subsequent slides. The meaning of resilience, managing and thriving, strengthening coping are all the four categories related, major categories related to the study. Now for this session, for the purpose of this presentation, like I said earlier, the first category as mentioned in the first slides was talked about experiencing workplace adversity and perceived effects. Mind you, I said this study, the experience of workplace violence was an accidental finding from this study. And so I talked about because, because of the number of violence experienced by the midwife, I talked, I thought 
I thought I thought it that it was better for me to discuss this at a, at a research as a as, as a research opening like this uh, of this magnitude. The first subcategory was the nature of adversity experienced by the midwife, and the second subcategory was responses to the adversity and the perceived effect as described by the midwives. Now, now I have four. I have about eight of the sub teams working in difficult workplace was discussed having poor collegial relationship difficult midwife patient relationship grappling with difficult emotion losing it and overreacting which leads to the which leads to distress disrespectful midwifery disrespectful midwifery care then developing physical challenges delivering poor quality of care and poor work and life balance, which they talked, which they mentioned as being out of balance. Now, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to be focusing on having difficult midwife patient relationship, which result, which may result into the experience of workplace adversity when considering the definition of workplace adversity, uh, sorry, workplace violence as, as discussed earlier. Now, I shall be, I'll, I'll quickly run through the slide. Having a difficult midwife patient relationship, most of the codes were block codes. Why? Because the, the midwives as, have given some sort of narrative. We don't talk shortly here. We need to give, we talk like, we need to explain a particular phenomenon until we, the meaning is being, the meaning is, is being, is being defined. Here, one of the midwife talked about there was a day her experience. There was a there was a time she I came in to take over. I saw a patient related trying to beat a colleague of mine. So I had to intervene, but they wouldn't listen to me. They were very aggressive. We had to lock the midwife in an office because they were ready to hit her. This is a why she attends to a mother with a postpartum hemorrhage under her care before she attends to them because the mother they brought was stable and was not showing any sign of contraction yet it was just a few minutes for me to come in that is the midwife talking about it but they wouldn't listen and blame the midwife for lack of concern about their patient they were all yelling at us and screaming on top of their voices this supports other findings where Sometimes patient relative felt the midwife have an it, it is, uh, are unconcerned about them, and that brings about aggression and sometimes the display of workplace violence. Still on it, another slide depicting the experience of workplace violence: a mother and relative try to abscond after childbirth without paying their hospital bill and I tried to stop them. The woman's relative and woman's and the woman woman started insulting me and were threatening to hit me for standing on their way because they have no money to pay. So many of the issues this patient talked about was largely due to either lack of funds which results into abusive relationship or difficult relationship between the midwife and the, the, the relative and this was talked about almost this as what this was been this was experienced by almost all the participants now the next slide we'll be talking about the prevention of preventing workplace violence as described by the participants these are some of the these are some of the points they mentioned on how this can be curtailed and will increase the number of women using the facility because studies have reported that in currently in Nigeria, only 50, only 30, 39% of women develop deliver in the hospital facility, in the facility, while 59% of mothers still delivered at home without the support of a skilled birth attendant. And one, one of the reasons they pointed out was the attitude of the healthcare workers. So now. One of the responses the participant gave were preparing mother on what to expect of labor and births, building interpersonal relationship, 
knowing oneself, calling for help, evaluating the free maternal and child health care policy. Now, preparing women on what to expect of labor and birth. Now, one of the midwife, the name there are pseudonyms. These are not the real name of the participants. They are false name in one of the hospital. And she said, due to, a shortage, due to a shortage of midwife, we don't have time to give all the information to the mothers at the antenatal clinic. You can imagine six midwives attending to 260 60 women at the ANC. You can't say everything. But it's very important to tell them what to expect and what they need to know when giving health talk. Educate them on labor and how they need to cooperate with the midwife. I take my time to talk to these women. I tell them the financial implication and the hospital routine requirement. When she presents in labor, I emphasize on being prepared for birth. All this is talking about prepare, pre preparedness for birth. I keep reminding them to buy things needed at subsequent antenatal visit. I don't get tired. This is pointing at preparing the woman or bed preparedness. Now, the next slide is talking about building interpersonal relationship. Majority of the midwife mention the importance of this as very important in creating an excellent midwife client relationship. Sometimes, like I said, they, they do a lot of the the, the, the quotes were largely block quotes. Sometimes you can have a patient relative wanting to hit you as a midwife. You have to be patient. Make them understand because by the time they bring in their patient, both the patient and the relative are always anxious. Sorry, I have to read it out. So you have to take your time, tell them what to expect and calm them. Try to be kind to win their confidence so that they will believe and trust you in order to develop a good relationship with you the midwife. You have to be very, very diplomatic and patient in dealing with these women and their relatives. Majority of the major, this is just one among the trans, the, 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 the S and verbatim data, verbatim data from the, from the participants. Majority of the, majority of them emphasize on the importance of building interpersonal relationship. The next slide is talking about knowing oneself. Here, the participants, in fact, I think majority of the participants talked about knowing yourself and working on your attitude. And one of them said, but the truth is I know myself. I used to be highly temperamental. I don't, I told myself, look, this is one of your attitude and it's not good for you as a health worker. If you want to achieve something, you have to work for it. You have to give your clients confidence. I've worked for over 15 years in the labor world. I now found out that women need somebody they can confide in. I said to myself, Maria, you have to work on your temper. So when you get irritated easily, they can't confide in you and you will not get results. Or you may both lose it and start exchanging words. So knowing yourself and changing your attitude is 150% important as a midwife. This is by Maria in hospital. Hospital A, and most of them talked about the importance of working on their attitude for the purpose of building an excellent relationship with their women. And by so doing, the, 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 the difficult relationship will be prevented and the workplace violence will also be curtailed, thereby bringing more women to utilize healthcare facility for delivery. Still on preventing workplace violence, calling for help. Now, some of them were even slapped. This was said. Uh, this was mentioned among um, among fifty percent of the, uh, half of the participants that formed the theoretical sample. They talked about the importance of calling for help instead of direct calling for help. Instead of talking to the patient directly, it's better they call for help for security people, the security personnel. To, to draw the attention of the, uh, the client that is trying to talk to them harshly. Then evaluating the free maternal and child health policy. Now, this policy has been put in place to provide services for mothers in the states. The essence of this was to ensure that mothers come to the healthcare center, have the antenatal, 
have their intrapartal services as well as postnatal services without paying a dime. But you find out that the services are not providing care as described by many of the participants. And then this participant said there is a policy on pre free maternal health services available for women using maternal services. In reality, these services are not in place due to inadequate funding as most time consumables and other materials are not available, making these women to purchase it out of their pocket, placing unbearable financial burden on them. Sometimes they have no money to pay and will be at loggerheads with the midwife. I think stakeholders should monitor and evaluate routinely to make the system work better. This is by one of the midwives. He's trying to advocate for the free maternal health and child health policy to be monitored. Because if this policy is monitored, some of the aggressive relationship that comes up will be will be will be, will be avoided. Halima, we've got eight minutes left for finishing and questions. I see you at your conclusion, so we should be okay. Thank you very much, Ali, for the for the nudge. Now, in conclusion, preventing workplace violence is paramount to promoting a healthy midwife women interaction. This interaction may enhance an excellent birth experience for women necessary for sustainable use of formal maternal health services, of course, in Nigeria, where the maternal mortality is unacceptably high. Finally, I would say thank you all for your complete attention and welcome to the virtual international day of the midwife thank you halima for a really comprehensive explanation of your study for your phd we do have a little bit of time now for some questions so if you have any please feel free to write them in the chat box jackie asked earlier Halima, what proportion of a family's income does it cost to have a baby in Nigeria? Say that again, please. What proportion of a family's income does it cost to have a baby in Nigeria? OK. Thank you very much for the question. Now, to have a normal bath, it depends on where you're going to have the bath. In, in hospitals like the tertiary hospitals, they charge out of pocket. Sometimes they charge about, it depends on what, on what that particular family are earning. The basic sal the the salary scale in Nigeria, I think the minimum the minimum wage in Nigeria is supposed to be 30,000 naira. That's about 15 pounds sorry that's about 60 that's about 60 pounds and then if they are charged if if you have to go to the facility to give but they may charge about they may charge about 10 20 pounds so that's about roughly 20 percent or sorry roughly 40 percent of the salary so it's a bit expensive for people that are earning below average or on their normal normal uh, salary scale, minimum wage. Thank you. Have I answered the question? There, there's two questions which may be combined. So one is about the percentage of home births in Nigeria, and the other one is about do women engage in hospital births in your area? So Halima. Sorry, um, Halima. Sorry, I didn't sorry. I didn't hear the last word. It just went mute. Say that again, please. So the percentage of home birth in your area and do women engage in hospital birth in your area? Do women engage in hospital birth in my area? Yes. Yeah, they do. But most time. They call the attention of probably a traditional birth attendant to assist them, but not the midwives. And do the rest sometimes they account? avoid hospital. Sometimes they avoid hospital because of lack of funds and 
the difficulties of even accessing the hospital or going to the hospital. So they prefer to call the traditional bath attendant in their community to support them. I think you've answered Ginger's question that one of the reasons they do avoid the, the hospital birth is because of the cost. Yeah. Yeah, it's because of the cost. And like I said, it, our method of healthcare funding is largely out of pocket. So sometimes to stay away from spending out or incurring an, a catastrophic health expenditure, they prefer to use the available cheap birth attendant in their community to support them while they deliver their baby. Is there anything that the Nigerian government is doing to deal with this problem that you've highlighted in your study? Yeah, recently, recently the social, recently they are beginning to pro, to talk about making um, making the services, make, making the women enroll in the National Health Insurance Scheme. That is the community part of it to support, to support them. And then when they do that, of course, it will take part of their, their bills away and then they, they won't be able to pay. They, the, the catastrophic health expenditure will be lesser. The, 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 the extra money they'll have to pay out of their pocket will not be as if they are doing it completely, 100% using the out-of-pocket method of payment. Halima, you have been wonderful. I have really Thank enjoyed you, hearing about your study and I know some of the other delegates have been really keen to hear about some of the background to the methodology of your study as well and found a really good understanding of how you've explained it. And I think you have opened our eyes to the conditions that midwives have to work in in other parts of the world. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ali. I could see okay. some questions coming in. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Jane, for that nudge. Thank you all.